Hello. Good day. I hope that you hear me. Great. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we will wait a uh, few more minutes for others to join. I hope that is okay. Okay, uh, we will start within one minute. Uh, others can join during the presentation. Hello to everyone. I see that we have participants for uh, South Africa, Guinea, Botswana, Algeria, India, uh, I suppose from uh, some other parts of the world. Okay, so uh, now I will start with the presentation.
Uh, okay, so I hope that uh, you all uh, see my screen and that hear that you hear me well. My name is uh, Branko Planojevic and I work as uh, original sales uh, manager in uh, a DB Power uh, company. I am also an application engineer for circuit breaker testing and uh, uh, ground grid integrity testing uh, in um, uh, DB Power uh, for almost uh, 10 years. Uh, topic of this uh, presentation is one of the uh, most uh, common and most important tests for circuit breaker uh, testing and uh, not only for circuit breaker testing but uh, for for wide range of applications it's a contact resistance measurement the basically uh, we will focus the most uh, on uh, contact resistance measurement for uh, medium voltage and high voltage circuit breakers because this is the, the main topic of the of this webinar but uh, I will also introduce uh, introduce some other uh, specific and interesting applications of contact resistance measurement so at the beginning uh, we will just uh, Pinpoint importance of uh, CRM contact resistance measurement. Then we will speak uh, how, how to select appropriate micrometer type. Uh, when I say uh, how to select uh, a micrometer type, I don't do not think uh, whether you should uh, uh, select uh, uh, our company, DV Power, or some competitor company. We, we uh, do not speak about. Uh, that uh, we only analyze the technical aspects uh, of uh, this because there are different uh, types of micrometers available in the market so you should know which type is appropriate for which application of course uh, then uh, one chapter will be about uh, a medium vo uh, and high voltage circuit breaker testing of course uh, uh, this is not a, a marketing presentation. This is mostly a technical presentation, but we will mention the power devices and applications, uh, of course. And as I already said, some interesting uh, applications for uh, CRM, CRM tests, such as uh, ground grid integrity testing, wind turbine, uh, earthing protection, uh, checking or verification. Uh, so, uh, need to say that uh, this is entry-level uh, presentation, uh, basic uh, uh, basic information about contact resistance measurement. But I believe that uh, uh, it can be useful because uh, I will try to summarize all important aspects about this uh, this test uh, and. Uh, it can be useful for you to find out uh, uh, what what, uh, what features are important when when speaking about contact resistance measurement, uh, and what type of devices you can find on market, and, and, and uh, so on. In just a second, I see that. Uh, Okay, and just uh, before uh, I officially start uh, with, with the topic, uh, ca can you uh, confirm if everything is okay with sound and uh, uh, did you see the, the starting uh, screen of the presentation? Okay, great. So we'll, we will continue. Uh, since uh, there, there is a lot of participants, uh, uh, we will not, uh, we will not uh, answer the questions uh, uh, during the presentation. And uh, maybe uh, when the first first part of presentation is completed, we can we can discuss some uh, uh, issues. 
so basically uh, why why this uh, test is uh, so important you know that uh, circuit breakers medium high voltage circuit breakers uh, devices and apparatus which conducts a very high uh, current and uh, uh, they should protect other apparatus in the in the system uh, by uh, breaking the uh, volt uh, current and during this uh, process um, the there is a mechanical wear and uh, treat on uh, circuit breakers contacts and uh, the contact uh, surface can be uh, damaged it is very important to have a, a very low resistance of circuit breakers uh, because uh, increased uh, increased resistance will lead to increased uh, heating and uh, the uh, basically when we have increased heating we also have uh, increased losses uh, and uh, maybe uh, this uh, this slide uh, will uh, um, re represent this uh, in in better way because uh, when we have uh, 10 uh, kiloamps um, current and uh, if the uh, contact resistance is uh, increased to one milliohm power loss uh, on that point will be 100 kilowatts so we will have increased uh, and very high losses um, on a circuit breaker chamber and uh, uh, the, the even the worst situation is that we have increased heating and that we can uh, um, decrease the working cycle and working life of the cir that circuit breaker and uh, uh, in in worst case uh, circuit breaker will not be able to operate and to protect uh, other equipment transformers and uh, uh, apparatus in substations uh, for example, for generator uh, circuit breakers, uh, they, they uh, usually have a very high uh, rated uh, continuous current up to 40,000 ampere, and uh, uh, for the uh, for that reason, uh, for example, resistance of these uh, breakers is uh, usually only few microns and any increase of resistance uh, of course is a huge problem as you know the uh, when we have some uh, uh, connection uh, there will not be like uh, 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 we will not have a situation like in the left uh, a photo with homogeneous uh, uh, dissipation of uh, current but we will have uh, several connection uh, points and uh, basically all current will be uh, led by these uh, uh, through these points and uh, uh, we don't want th these points to be like hot points with the very increased uh, temperature and uh, to, to to have um, too high losses. Uh, there are uh, several uh, test methods which are used for measurement of uh, resistance. Uh, but uh, when we when we speaking about contact resistance measurement, generally. Uh, we do not speak about any uh, uh, mega ohms, kilo ohms, or uh, uh, something like that. So we are not testing isolation. We are testing quality of connection, and uh, usually this is these values are in micro ohm range. For this reason, these devices are called uh, uh, micrometers. Or sometimes, if we are testing uh, some uh, inductive test object, that then can be called like winding ohmmeters. 
but uh, generally uh, we speak about resistance which is less than one ohm in most of the cases and uh, as you can see on, on this diagram the the best uh, accuracy and uh, the, the most appropriate uh, method uh, for measurement of these small resistances is four point test method so what is four point test method as you can see in this slide uh, it means that we basically have a, a separate wires for measurement of the voltage drop on test object and separate wires for conducting the current uh, in this case uh, the resistance of wires will not be involved in the total results and uh, also the resistance on the on the clamps uh, and uh, these transient resistances will not be included uh, they should not be included when measuring because we want to have high accuracy and we want to measure only voltage drop on the test object and of course current through the test object so by dividing uh, readings on the, I say voltmeter or um, uh, ampermeter um, uh, we get uh, exact value of the resistance you should not be confused that sometimes micro micrometers have uh, only uh, two clamps but uh, that is also acceptable in case that uh, current uh, leading uh, a cable and a voltage sense cable are connected uh, to the same clamps but uh, from from different sides that is also four point kelvin method uh, so now i will say a few words about the different types uh, of uh, micrometers and how basically to select what what you really need uh, I think this part is uh, very important because uh, micrometers are very popular devices and uh, um, these devices are available in the market for uh, uh, dozens of uh, years and they have been developing uh, technologies are developing of course so you need uh, to, do, to 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 know what what are the differences between all these uh, all these models so uh, first uh, generation of micrometers which are even now in use and uh, quite popular for some applications are main main power supplied uh, micrometers so uh, uh, of course uh, i will uh, say later that uh, now uh, there are a lot of uh, micrometers which are introduced with battery uh, power supply but uh, of course uh, there are some uh, advantages of main power supply if the how to say uh, if you require to have uh, as much as as possible uh, output uh, power or maybe if you need uh, to use uh, some um, continuous uh, tests uh, usually the main power supply will be in advantage comparing with the uh, batteries of course depending on the type and so on so uh, when we have a, a main power supplied micrometer what we have so uh, we have on in, in input of the device on the power cord we have some uh, voltage which is uh, uh, 150 volts or 230 volts uh, depending uh, basically of, of the rated voltage of, of that network so in USA we will have 150 110 in Europe for example we have a uh, 220 230 volts AC and uh, of course you have 50 or 60 Hertz frequency and uh, 
uh, inside of the device, uh, that signal, that input signal should be transformed to get uh, DC uh, current uh, at the output. And uh, uh, we do not need uh, so high voltages, but we need higher currents. So uh, this, uh, for example, 230 volts and uh, uh, should be uh, transferred to, for example, seven volts DC and to have a, a current which is in most of the cases uh, 100 amperes of, or, or higher. It is always always advantage to have to have a ripple free DC current and uh, to have regulated current at the output so that user can select the the, the appropriate current value for for testing. Uh, in this group of devices, as I said, you will find the devices which are still in use and uh, which are manufacturing the latest generation but you will find some of the first type of the micrometers usually the difference between these models are in weight of the device uh, these new devices are not so heavy heavy weight uh, they are for example seven eight uh, kilos while the all the old type of these micrometers can be like 25 kilos weight and the reason is because basically the way of uh, this transformation of the input to output voltage is uh, quite different where the old type uh, group 1a micrometers use uh, heavy auto transformers and basically transform with the uh, network frequency that signal for this reason, uh, because auto transformers are heavy, these micrometers are also uh, very heavy and they also use heavy weight uh, cables. So I would say these type of micrometers are not so popular these days. Uh, however, the, the other group of devices use, use advanced electronics and uh, maybe the most uh, important difference, uh, they use high frequency transformers and uh, basically these transformers of course not so uh, heavy and uh, with use of this technology it is uh, possible to make device which is not so heavy which is maybe eight kilo weight and it still can generate um, uh, 600 amperes for example at the output uh, Basically, um, these are differences, as I said, uh, but uh, usually a weight of this group 1B with high frequency transformers is less than 10 kilos and uh, weight of this first group with the auto transformers is uh, more than uh, 50 uh, kilos. So if you have micrometer, which is 50 kilos of or or more, you know that it, it's using um, quite old technology with uh, robust auto transformers and uh, you cannot expect to have a good uh, uh, filtration of the test current when you do not have good um, regulation and filtration of the uh, test current you also cannot expect to have uh, uh, so good accuracy or stable output voltage which is required because you don't have to have, you want uh, you don't want to have any ripples uh, in, in output uh, uh, signal output uh, current uh, the other group of devices are also portable devices but uh, these devices now have possibility to be uh, battery operated Usually they can be used uh, as main power supplied units and as battery operated devices, uh, which of course gives some advantages over the over the main power supplied uh, units. Uh, in some applications, uh, it, it's it's definitely advantage uh, uh, to to. Uh, to, to be possible to take device with yourself uh, and that you are not connected to, to any power su uh, su supply so 
just just to use the, the internal battery of course however the the measurement principle uh, when you uh, making the test with these devices uh, is the, basically the, the same uh, as for main power supplied micrometers and you will still have to use uh, long cables uh, for example for testing high voltage breakers you will need to, to use 10 15 uh, uh, meter long cables uh, so the the total weight of the device and the uh, accessories uh, will not be basically uh, much lower much lower than comparing with main power and traditional micrometers and uh, the the third group is uh, handheld micrometers and I would say that this group is uh, becoming more and more popular. Um, when I speak about the DV power, I do not have any reason to, uh, how to say, to give advantage to some particular ty group type of these devices because we manufacture basically all, all these types of uh, micrometers. Uh, so I'm um, just saying from the practical uh, point of view that uh, these handheld micrometers are, uh, have many advantages comparing with the a traditional type of micrometers because the, they speed up the measurement process and maybe the most important reason is that you don't need uh, to use long cables in a majority of applications. However, in this uh, field, uh, there are two different technologies. Uh, technologies for generating the current from the handheld unit. So, uh, these all these devices which you find in market usually are capable to generate uh, 100 or 200 or even 300 amperes uh, and uh, th that looks quite incredible because the uh, weight of these devices is maybe one kilo uh, or 1.5 something like that uh, so how, how this is uh, possible uh, there are two different technologies one is to have a a uh, built-in uh, ultra capacitor, uh, which is uh, usually called uh, uh, super capacitor, uh, because it is capable to to discharge very high uh, test currents, and this uh, ultra capacitor is charged with built-in battery. So these devices have built-in battery and built-in ultra capacitor, uh, which is used for discharging of the current. Uh, different uh, technology uh, is uh, when you have only battery used for generating of the these high currents and of course uh, maybe 10 years ago this was not possible but now we have so powerful batteries uh, usually lithium polymer battery type is used and which are basically uh, capable to discharge uh, these uh, hundreds of amperes and uh, uh, for this reason this uh, technology is uh, quite um, unique and interesting what is the difference the difference uh, is that uh, when you use only uh, battery technology um, it is possible to to regulate the test current and uh, user is can select basically the current value which he wants to use for the test uh, while in case of ultra capacitor technology this is not uh, uh, possible why it is not possible because uh, the current generated from the ultra capacitor will depend on uh, a voltage of course on the ultra capacitor that means that it will depend on the voltage of the battery and also it will de 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 depend of the load and cables resistance so it is not possible to 
to calculate exact value of the test current which will be generated and uh, what is also quite frustrating for, for for these devices is that usually you need to wait for this ultra capacitor to charge every time i know this because uh, we also had one handheld micrometer which is now discontinued and which used this technology and now uh, uh, we use only a uh, battery for generating current lithium polymer batteries and this uh, technology is quite good because uh, now it is possible to regulate test current so if you want to select 200 or 200 or 300 amperes it is possible and uh, uh, current is generated in one out automatic ramp uh, with uh, uh, stable value during the measurement and you also don't need to wait for ultra capacitor to wait. So this is basically the, the, the difference between these two uh, technologies. This is a graph of the current generated from lithium polymer battery on the left and the current generated from ultra capacitor. Of course, a current generated from ultra capacitor will de uh, decrease during the test it's normal process so basically you see the discharging of the uh, uh, ultra capacitor uh, so what can be a conclusion how to select appropriate micrometer type uh, maybe the the right answer is price <laughs> of course uh, it's not right to answer but uh, usually of course price is very uh, important uh, uh, element uh, however we will not uh, analyze this aspect only technical uh, point of view uh, we cannot give a, we cannot give a correct answer because uh, selecting appropriate micrometer type uh, depends on uh, application for some application applications uh, it is uh, still i think advantage to use uh, uh, standard main power supplied micrometers for example if you have uh, 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 some routine tests in uh, uh, switch gear factories i know that uh, here in sweden abb uh, for example and uh, also some other manufacturers uh, excuse me now it, it is hitachi energy uh, using uh, for example dv power main power supplied micrometers and they still do not want to, to switch because uh, it's always available uh, main power supply in in uh, uh, in factory and uh, they sometimes want to to uh, to generate um, a very high currents for a long period of time so it's uh, of course not possible uh, most of the cases when you use batteries or something like that uh, if you want to use micrometers for some field applications for field testing then you can consider uh, to use group two or group three devices then mean that means uh, battery operated devices um, so uh, in most of the cases, if you want to perform uh, fast uh, um, testing and just to check whether you have good connections and everything, uh, it's uh, convenient to use handheld devices because you will not have too, too many cables. Uh, it's, it's very lightweight and the use of these micrometers speeds up the, the measurement process. Of course, if you still need some more uh, power and to have a uh, long test with very high current something like that then you can also consider to use uh, uh, battery operated micrometers which are uh, i would say the some middle solution between handheld micrometers and the main power supplied um, micrometers okay and now uh, i will switch uh, to the part about uh, testing uh, 
uh, medium and high voltage circuit breakers. Uh, and then after this part, we will have some uh, questions and uh, some uh, short uh, discussion. Uh, so why we test? I already said, uh, said in the introduction of the presentation that uh, uh, circuit breakers need to have a very low resistance. And uh, so why is that? Because 99.9% uh, .9 of working life of one circuit breaker is it, it is uh, in closed position. So it, it's just conducting the current and of course that we do not want to have increased resistance of the contacts. Then of, of course uh, uh, standards, uh, international standards IC and IEEE uh, uh, named this uh, test as one of the uh, most important tests for circuit breaker testing. And uh, this test is part of basically all types of uh, testing of the, uh, circuit breakers, including uh, uh, factory type testing and also routine uh, testings. Um, what we can detect? We can detect damage contacts, uh, or maybe uh, that maybe the contacts are not damaged, but uh, contact force of the operating mechanism is not sufficient to close the contacts properly. Or sometimes we can uh, have some dried oils on the contact, so the, the, the resistance can be increased. Or maybe it's just malfunctioning where the, maybe uh, usually in those situations you will find uh, few few faults maybe faults with operating mechanism which also reflects to the the co contact system and uh, uh, usually uh, these kind of faults are um, i'd say uh, main faults because they are they occur inside of the contact chamber so you cannot disassemble the contact chamber easily so uh, if you have uh, this uh, kind of faults, uh, then you have a huge problem. But of course, uh, before uh, saying that you have problem, you need to, to check uh, uh, the Italy and the, how to say, the last solution is that a uh, circuit breaker is malfunctioning. You, you should uh, uh, assume first that maybe um, the results are not good, maybe even test device is not good. Um, but uh, if if you perform correct uh, testing procedure and maybe some consequent uh, uh, testing of other types, you can be sure uh, whether you have or you do not have problem. As I said, the uh, test is done uh, directly on the contact chamber because uh, main uh, and arcing contacts are uh, placed in in contact chamber, so. Uh, you you will you need to connect directly to the terminals of the of the breakers to, to, to the main contact circuit. Ideally, this resistance is zero. Of course, it, you cannot expect to have zero, but uh, for modern breakers, it's very close to zero. It's in range from 30 to 100 microns, and uh, as I said, for generator breakers, uh, you you will sometimes find on only few microns resistance and uh, also this this is uh, this was mentioned before that this test is done during basically all stages of uh, circuit breaker manufacturing uh, during commissioning stage or, or later on uh, during some regular maintenance uh, testing um, so if you want to name uh, maybe two or three most important tests for circuit breakers, contact resistance measurement will definitely be uh, uh, one of them because, uh, uh, as I said, most of the time it's in closed position, it, it conducts current, so it, it's very important to check that the resistance of the breaker is uh, in acceptable limits. Um, 
how to select appropriate value of the test current. Uh, you can uh, follow standards recommendation. Uh, standards say that minimum test current for testing uh, circuit breakers should be higher than uh, 50 amperes according to IEC or higher than uh, 100 amperes according to IEEE. But uh, standards do not say that uh, that is recommended current for testing. So that, that is minimum current and it should be as high as possible up to nominal current of the breaker. So uh, our recommendation as a manufacturer or test equipment is always to use as high current as possible because uh, we are speaking about very low values of resistance. Uh, if you have um, 20 microns, uh, even uh, 100 amperes is uh, sufficient in most of the cases, but uh, the measurement signal, volt drop on the contacts will be um, only 2 millivolts, which is, you will agree, very, uh, very low measurement signal. So if, if it is possible to use five times higher current, like 500 amperes, uh, why you should not use it? You will have five times better measurement signal, so you, definitely you can expect to have uh, uh, better results. As I said, in most of the cases, uh, 100 amperes is uh, acceptable, 100 and 200 amperes is kind of uh, standard in most of the utilities and organizations for testing contact resistance but uh, i know that many utilities uh, are using higher currents uh, uh, and of course uh, uh, oems uh, silk breaker manufacturers they are mostly using 500 amperes or more REE in Spain using 400 amperes, uh, Ijumak in Egypt uh, 600 amperes, um, ABB 500 or 600 amperes. Uh, so uh, there is one recommendation from the standards that then if the resistance, measured resistance is uh, suspicious in terms that it is uh, uh, close to limits or out of limits, the test should be repeated uh, with the higher current. So, um, this uh, uh, sentence or similar to this, you will find in the international standards describing contact resistance measurement. There is also effect of pollution on the contact surface, which is also one reason to use higher current. Uh, output voltage for micrometer, uh, why is it so important? Usually when, when you see uh, the specifications of the micrometer, in the name of the device you will see the, what is the highest current. But uh, uh, you will not uh, find so easily information about output voltage. And uh, this is also very important information if you want to check whether the device is, how to say, powerful or not. So, uh, you cannot say that it is powerful if if it is, uh, it, it, it has uh, only high output current. So, output power is, of course, output voltage multiplied with output current. So, uh, uh, why, why it is good to have a uh, really powerful micrometer in terms that you have high output current with high output voltage because in this case you can use thinner cables um, for micrometers you usually uh, if you have 500 amperes usually you will use 50 uh, square meters uh, cross section of the cable sometimes uh, even 70 or 95 so that means that the weight of cables with, which we, will be higher than the weight of the of the device itself, and uh, you can uh, avoid this by uh, 
having a high output voltage on the device. So usually if you have high output um, voltage, uh, a device will be capable to have also high voltage drop on the cables. So thinner cables and it's, it's much more convenient for use. And also you will have a wider measurement range when using higher current. Example, for example, in India, because I'm a, a person responsible for the Indian market also uh, for more than five years, and uh, I know that uh, tenders for uh, contact resistance measurement requires to have a test lead longer than 20 meters. So uh, if you want to use a uh, very uh, low cross section like 60 square millimeters uh, with 20 meter test leads you need to have uh, at least 5.25 volts and uh, at output of the micrometer so you need to, to consider these things also and how to calculate these these things basically i put here some uh, very simple uh, calculation which uh, I believe can be useful for, for for customers or also for engineers and just to check uh, uh, what type of cables they need what is maximum resistance that can be tested so all that can be calculated from, from very simple uh, how to say uh, 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 calculation because uh, output uh, output voltage on the device is usually information given by a manufacturer of test equipment and of course you have uh, information about test current which is used so output voltage is equal to uh, test current multiplied with the uh, summarized resistance of the test leads and uh, uh, test object itself so for example uh, we have uh, devices for me measurement of resistance of the uh, grounding loops in in the substations for measurement of ground grid integrity testing which use uh, uh, 300 amperes test current and which has output voltage of uh, 7.8 volts and output so if you use for example 10 meter cables with 50 uh, millimeter uh, square millimeters cross section you will have resistance of 8.4 milliohms and it's very easy to calculate that maximum <coughs> resistance which can be measured with this current is uh, 70.8 milliohms uh, of course with with same with the same formula, with the same calculation. Uh, if you know the, the resistance of the test object, you can calculate, for example, resistance of the cables. So, so and you can see whether you, sh you can use maybe a lower cross section. Uh, connection to the uh, breaker, as I said, is directly to the uh, terminals of the braking chamber. Uh, if you have live tank breakers, like on the left photo, you will connect to each and every braking chamber. If you have a dead tank breaker or GIS breaker, you can connect only to the terminals of the one phase. So. Uh, this uh, breaker on the right side can also have two breaking points but inside of the tank so you cannot uh, how to say approach you cannot cannot connect directly to the each breaking point so you will measure the resistance of the phase Uh, it's four point method so you can you should use uh, separate current and voltage sense leads 
Um, you can uh, select cables which are separate, I mean separate uh, current leads and separate voltage sense leads, or you can use uh, the combined test leads which are connected to the same clamp, but in, still in this case you have separate current, current leads and uh, voltage sense leads. For handheld models the, the connection principle uh, is uh, similar. Basically, uh, if, if the manufacturer provides longer cables, you can do traditional measurements from the ground, but uh, uh, you can also use, uh, for example, uh, very short cables, and uh, if you have a um, testing crane or basket, you have just uh, take measurements direct, directly on the braking chamber. So, since it's a, it, it is handheld device, operator will take it with himself and make measurement direct, directly on the chambers. For this reason, you need the cables which are like 1.3 or 3 meter long. You don't need longer cables because uh, uh, the braking chamber is not so big. So even these cables will, will be totally uh, sufficient for, for making measurement for breakers even on 400 or uh, 765 kV, which we have in India, for example. Now, a uh, little bit about uh, testing in both sides grounded uh, condition. Uh, it's uh, one of the... Uh, most frequent uh, requirements lately because uh, in, in uh, utilities worldwide uh, everyone is trying to increase safety of the personal of the equipment everything and uh, grounding equipment uh, on both sides during the measurement is always uh, providing some additional uh, safety to the personal because in case that you have some fault during the maintenance or testing the, these in, induced currents will not uh, uh, be threat for the test personnel. They they can close through the grounding loops from the s side of uh, manufacture of test equipment from the DB power side and uh, other side. The both sides grounding. It's uh, uh, how to say. Uh, a little bit more demanding application comparing with, with the one side grounding but of course we have adapted all devices for use in these uh, conditions because as i said it, it provides additional safety when we're speaking about uh, contact resistance measurement why it is more demanding because uh, uh, in one side grounded conditions the only loop for current during the testing is through the test leads and to, through the breaker. But when you add second grounding, uh, you will have additional path for the current through these uh, grounding uh, cables and through the grounding system and the substation. Of course, this resistance is much higher comparing with the resistance of the breaker, but uh, some small amount of the current, one or two percent, for example, can flow through the ground. So it is a advantage if you can use current clamps and measure this current. Uh, we have micrometers with the, this uh, uh, capability. If you do not have uh, current clamps for measurement of the grounding current, then uh, you can expect that uh, error could be up to one two percent uh, depending of the of the condition and the resistance of the grounding loop uh, sometimes there are also requirements for remote uh, control features uh, why because uh, sometimes it's, it's very dangerous to be close to the test object even to the breaker uh, sometimes you you just cannot uh, I would say you cannot be close uh, to, to the breaker because of the design or maybe if it is uh, uh, HIS or GIS uh, 
uh, substation, maybe uh, uh, operator will not be possible to be close to the uh, device. And uh, it is uh, it is useful to have some capability to, to make the testing remotely. So this is just an illustration of, of this situation. So, uh, okay, you want to, to, to perform measurement, uh, you have short leads, but for, for some reason you you don't want to be uh, in that induction zone as I, or, or, or close to the device or to the breaker. So you can use uh, similar features. So most of the manufacturers have uh, their own solutions for remote control modules in, in DV power we have also different solutions for for um, this application to providing this and sometimes it's uh, it's also more convenient if uh, you use for example uh, a portable devices which I mean power supplied and uh, uh, there is only one operator in the field which wants to perform more measurement then it's good to have this remote control feature and uh, to start uh, and stop testing remotely uh, for example if you are in the in the uh, test screen te test basket uh, you can uh, perform measurements directly from the crane you don't need to go up and down every time um, also uh, sometimes uh, interesting uh, features can be measurement of ultra low resistances I, uh, example we had uh, some requirements from Siemens for measurement of the connection on the GIS uh, or uh, uh, some applications for measuring resistance of the welding joints or for measurement of the generator circuit breakers which uh, can be like five microns so to, to tell you the truth, uh, all uh, manufacturers of circuit breakers testing uh, of uh, micrometers for testing circuit breakers uh, say that uh, device is capable capable to measure resistance from zero to the, for example, one ohm. But uh, in uh, in uh, real situations, it is very hard to get uh, precise results on ultra low resistances if you have only uh, few uh, microns. Uh, so uh, in DV power we, we find solution with using high precision module which uh, basically amplifies the signal uh, when these ultra low resistances are measured and uh, with using uh, this feature we enable to get uh, great accuracy even in these situations. You need to have extremely high accuracy for for these type of measurements because uh, if you measuring uh, uh, five microns and uh, if you have only two microns mistake, it will be <laughs> a significant mistake, of course. Uh, interesting. Uh, application uh, for contact resistance measurement is that when we are measuring for example G GIS or dead, dead tank breakers in this case uh, you will have uh, influence of the current transformer which is uh, mounted on the on the terminals of the breakers so you cannot use uh, uh, short and uh, quick tests for this you need to, to to have at least few seconds usually 5 10 15 uh, seconds test uh, to stabilize the result and to saturate the ct so when when ct is saturated the the current will become stable and uh, you will get a stable results of the result resistance so uh, if you're using some uh, micrometers from the competition uh you can use uh, continuous tests and you can monitor uh, the change of the results and uh, and the test when when results is is stable like um, you can do it manually 
if I say saying about DV power micrometers intended for this kind of testing, we have developed special test mode for this, so all detection is done automatically, and the uh, device will save the appropriate results at the end of the test by itself. So uh, um, I will just shortly introduce uh, uh, DV power um micrometers i will not bothering you too too much with this because it's technical presentation i think it's okay to just mention that we have um, three basic groups of micrometers uh, inimo a series uh, which is in metal housing and which is mostly used in uh, by circuit breaker manufacturers and in factory environments very powerful and lightweight uh, micrometers. For field use, uh, we recommend more plastic uh, devices uh, mounted in uh, plastic um, cases, which have um, AP67 protection with closed lid, and they're very convenient to use in fields because they are portable, and, but still very powerful. And uh, uh, these micrometers have additional both sides grounded uh, feature with car clamps and um, remote control features. And the latest generation of DV power micrometers is handheld IDMO H micrometers, which, which can generate uh, uh, up to 300 amperes. They can be used with short cables or with long cables. Uh, and uh, this is the, the best selling. Uh, our best seller in DV power, although we have uh, 17 micrometers models. Uh, these handheld units are uh, now best seller, and uh, because uh, basically uh, you get the same result with the device of one kilo and the results from eight kilos, and uh, even cables and device fits in in the, in, in one small plastic case so it's very convenient for use so this is example of uh, 800 ampere micrometer for demanding applications and uh, this is example of uh, irmo h uh, 3 micrometer which can generate up to 300 amperes and uh, uh, you can perform full day testing uh, with only one charging of the battery we have uh, different models, so I will not bothering you too much. So you can select uh, 100 ampere rated, 220 ampere rated, or 300 ampere rated models. You can select models which use uh, short cable types, or if you still want to use traditional long cables, we have these models uh, which can be used with 5, 10, or even 15 meter cables. Uh, now, uh, uh, I also want to introduce two interesting applications, which is uh, testing of the white carbon lighting protection and ground green integrity testing. But before that, uh, uh, since the main topic of the presentation is, uh, I would say, finished, we can uh, see uh, if you have some uh, questions. Uh, Okay, I will uh, try to read uh, uh, some of these uh, some of these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, we can share the the presentation to to participants. Uh, Uh, why all manufacturers give one pole or phase uh, uh, measuring uh, option? Yeah, because uh, it's uh, now you will find uh, in DV Power and other manufacturers also offering uh, solutions for measurement of the contact resistance or, s for example, six poles, uh, six uh, breaking chambers simultaneously. So up to uh, two, two breaking points per phase. Simultaneously, you can perform contact resistance and dynamic resistance. Uh, 
but usually micrometers are multifunctional devices which are used for uh, different uh, applications also and uh, uh, if you have a handheld solution like we have with IMO H uh, you uh, you will perform very quick measurement on uh, uh, all three phases uh, because you can do it measurement uh, directly by co uh, connecting the cables when you connect cables uh, you you make the measurement and even if you have three phase device you will still have to connect all cables to every braking chamber of the breaker uh, yes for, for for most of the micrometers you will have a, you will have a measurement uh, one point then uh, switch to the other point other braking chamber and and so on minimum value of contact resistance uh, is uh, uh, usually not uh, given by or some in some situation you, you will have a range of expected resistance as I said ideally uh, resistance would be zero or, or very close to zero you want to have as as, as less as possible resistance on on the contacts uh, length of test leads yeah that depends on the manufacturers in our case uh, it can be more than 20 meters even some cases we had uh, 35 meters requirements i think uh, also from india okay uh, so now i will uh, i will proceed with the, the these two also applications which, which can be interesting for contact resistance measurement uh, so wind turbine lighting protection testing you know that uh, wind t uh, turbines uh, being more and more popular worldwide and uh, uh, basically what is the situation that uh, uh, more than 80 or even 85 percent of downtime of wind turbines is uh, caused by lighting strikes so this is the the, the most uh, I would say uh, the biggest danger for the wind turbines and uh, also uh, now we are having a bigger and bigger wind turbines we are we are speaking about hundreds or even 200 meters height and uh, they are even more exposed to the lighting uh, so the the faults caused by lighting strikes are the, the uh, I would say, um, one of the biggest problem for for uh, owners and manufacturers of wind uh, turbines, and uh, this is where uh, the lighting protection uh, is uh, very very important and gets on on. Uh, uh, it's it's a very significant uh, a part of the design and uh, generally lighting uh, lighting protection system is uh, I would say complicated uh, uh, topic a uh, topic which can be which could be discussed on a few webinars by itself but in this particular presentation I will just mention the basic uh, part of lighting protection which is basically ground and conductor placed inside of the blade and uh, uh, which connects the blade tip and blade uh, root and also this uh, uh, from the blade root root it is connected to the base of the of the turbine tower and uh, uh considering the height of the wind turbines this is very interesting and demanding applications because you need to use test leads which are like 
100 meters long. Um, the expected resistance, of course, uh, depends on the length of that uh, uh, conductor. It's usually expected to be uh, in range from 10 to 35 milliohms, and uh, because of these uh, very long test leads, uh, it is sufficient to use uh, even one ampere. But of course, it's advantage if you have, uh, if you can use, uh, for example. Three amperes, which is uh, uh, enabled with our our RMO H had H E H device, which will be uh, like uh, soon published on, on the market. It's, so it's a new release from DV Power, and uh, it's of course provided with Teslas which are 30 or 60 or 100 meter. Uh, long and uh, have great uh, measurement capabilities and also Bluetooth communication. So measurement principle is uh, to, to measure first the, the resistance of this conductor from the blade tip to the blade root and of, as I said also from the uh, root to the base uh, tower. Uh, another interesting applications uh, why measuring these applications because this is all basically contact resistance measurement J just now we are not speaking about uh, circuit breakers but uh, about um, some other situations applications where, where you can use this uh, this test for ground grid integrity testing uh, dv power has uh, separate group of the dev devices which is called ggt and uh, because it is required for these devices to be extremely powerful uh, it is required to use uh, very high currents like 300 amperes and uh, to test uh, uh, sometimes high resistances and to use also very long cables like uh, up to 60 meters okay so because you want to test all all groundings in the substation uh, I will not speak too much why the grounding in substation is important. Uh, of course, is one of the most important parameters for protection of the apparatus and equipment in a substation. And uh, all faults uh, uh, which occur in a substation should be uh, conducted to the earth and uh, uh, all uh, step touch potentials with could could occur in substations should be limited and within uh, uh, within appropriate uh, limits and this particular test is uh, uh, not testing soil inductivity but uh, um, how to say conductivity of the metal parts which are uh, uh, installed uh, below the substation and uh, this uh, metal grid uh, in below substation can be damaged or uh, due to different factors uh, in from USA we, we got the interesting information that uh, uh, these uh, uh, earthing conductors were stolen from some substations although it's very hard to uh, uh, dig it from the ground, but uh, there is also a similar situation when when uh, the, the, uh, the these uh, ground grids are damaged on this way. Uh, this uh, particular test is, uh, as I said, resistance measurement. It's not uh, earth impedance test or uh, fall of potential method which is standardly used for measuring grounding uh, in the substations for that test you basically measure uh, the, the soil resistivity also but in this test which I'm speaking about uh, you're measuring only conductance and conductive parts of the grounding system so earthing conductors and the grid below substation test is this described in the international standards and it's called ground grid integrity tests so i will just uh, 
show how the test is done usually it's it's good to have a, a remote control module because the operator is on a very high distance from the device so this is the test setup uh, you will have one short test lead which is like black cable connected to the reference grounding point in the substation it's usually uh, grounding of the transformer one of the groundings of the transformer and you connect the black uh, current uh, cable to this uh, point and uh, um, red uh, current and voltage sense cable you uh, take with yourself and uh, test uh, groundings on different equipment from uh, circuit breaker disconnector switches uh, uh, current voltage transformers and so on uh, so if you have this uh, remote module which is wi-fi which has wi-fi communication with the main device one operator can perform test by itself and uh, just take this cable to the different uh, earthing leads and uh, check all connections we uh, check uh, two parameters that is voltage drop between the tested and reference point and also we checking current flow for that particular grounding lead so uh, current flow inspection we should expect to have down current at least uh, to be at least 50 percent or higher of the total generated current so if we use 300 amperes we expect that at least 150 amperes will flow directly down to the ground grid the other uh, part of current which flows up we will also of course it needs to be closed somewhere and it's also close to the grounding grid but not directly on this earthen uh, co conductor and in order to be acceptable you need for for these single grounding connections you need to have at least 50 percent of the total current like e down if you have multiple earthing connections on transformer for example total current which flowing down should be like at least 50 percent or higher from the total generated current uh, regarding voltage drop on uh, it depends on the type of the of the um, of the material ground conductors so if you're speaking about copper based groundings uh, on a 50 uh, 50 feet or 15 meter distance between reference and test and grounding points with 300 amperes we uh, expect to have a voltage drop less than one volt if it is higher than 1.5 volts uh, then uh, it's considered as bad and uh, if it is less than 1.5 but higher than 1 volts then means it's acceptable is it is acceptable but it needs to be investigated within maybe uh, some shorter uh, maintenance period so if you do it do it this test each five or ten years and if you have suspicious results like uh, you will need to repeat measurement within one or one or two years uh, devices used for these applications are called GGT uh, they are developed uh, on the basis of our standard micrometers but uh, this construction is a little bit uh, I would say uh, more powerful for this uh, uh, tests and uh, it can be used with uh, this wireless uh, remote control module so you can operate tests from the for example 50 meter distance or, or longer distances okay uh, that's it uh, from from my side regarding the contact resistance measurement basis uh, i hope uh, although I, I already mentioned it it is entry-level presentation but i hope it was useful to to find out some um, uh, important uh, features and points related to this measurement. Now,
uh, what factor affects the duration of the test? Uh, basically, uh, if we are speaking about uh, uh, circuit breaker testing, uh, standards do not uh, stipulate any uh, uh, duration of the tests. Uh, they only uh, uh, stipulate that uh, test current should be higher than 50 or 100 amperes and up to nominal current and then that you should use higher currents in case of suspicious results uh, from our uh, experience uh, the uh, longer tests are required when you have uh, some inductance involved for example <coughs> current transformers so if you are testing that tank breakers with current transformers on the bushings then uh, it is not good to use uh, short tests and uh, uh, you need to, to have test with uh, at least 10 to 15 seconds uh, and uh, to saturate uh, CT which I explained uh, before. Th this also applies to most of the GIS uh, um, and uh, usually uh, it's not required to have so long duration of the test for regular ma maintenance testing of the circuit breakers. For uh, this uh, wind turbine uh, lighting protection system checking also is not required to have uh, long duration tests. Uh, for ground grid integrity uh, duration can be set up to 60 seconds. Uh, from the field experience i know that uh, usually uh, tests last for only a few seconds so it's it's not uh, there is no use to wait 60 uh, uh, seconds usually is done within few seconds because you need to test multiple grounding uh, leads and uh, it, it would take too much time to, to wait uh, uh, each time um, a uh, longer duration of the test can be useful only to check change of the resistance during the time because uh, you should not expect to have any uh, sudden changes of the resistance uh, when you're measuring for example during 10 or 20 seconds only you can have a small increase due to heating of the uh, test object oh, then uh, depending on the test object type of course if, if you have a, a good contact uh, or maybe generated circuit breaker you will not hit it so easily so you should not basically expect to have any change of the resistance or very small uh, changes uh, we had also similar applications for measurement of the for example, vi vi uh, wind turbines generators, where also uh, it is not possible to test each particular segment of that enormous generator, and uh, you 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 need to check basically the, the the resistance of these generator windings by connecting directly to the terminals, and uh, a very small changes. Uh, are detected uh, when using uh, higher currents uh, and uh, for that particular test for example it is useful to have longer duration and to try to uh, at least uh, heat up a little bit uh, the, the the test object and see the changes of the of the resistance but for most of the cases uh, and uh, for circuit breaker testing uh, it's not required to have a long duration of the test, especially for live tank breakers. And then for medium voltage breakers, of course, you also don't need to have a long test. Only for dead tank breakers and GIS, maybe 10 to 15 seconds is sometimes required because of the CTs involved. Okay, if uh, 
just to see the, the um, uh, yes uh, for for uh, contact resistance value which you you sh uh, should accept uh, you, exp you which you should expect you should always refer to the manufacturer specifications so for all breakers you will have uh, expected limits for the breaker as i said uh, uh, you can have only problem with increased resistance or oh, usually during the usually manufacturer will, will give you limits uh, acceptable limits for resistance if you have only one expected expected value uh, usually for routine tests uh, and type tests 20 percent the deviation is uh, i would say a, a limit uh, so you can put that as as, as the, the reference a good way is always to compare the values on on three phases because uh, you have a even if you do not know the, the values you should have similar values on all three phases and usually if you have deviation and one phase it will be is easy, easily noticeable uh, minimum maximum acceptance value as i said uh, you cannot define uh, precisely usually it depends on the voltage level uh, also so but uh, um, as i said uh, you cannot put this as a general rule because there are some uh, uh, situation when you will uh, have extremely low resistance even on medium voltage breakers but with increase of the voltage level usually the uh, resistance of the breaker is going uh, down and uh, for high voltage breakers uh, for example 400 kV or more you will usually expect to have uh, less than 50 microns definitely less than 100 microns this is a uh, according to my experience in testing of a lot of uh, uh, circuit breakers uh, only on, on some older type of breakers you will find uh, acceptable resistances which are like higher than 100 uh, microns but still the better pair with manufacturer data and to see whether the resistance is acceptable or not Uh, why micrometer needs need to supply need to supply uh, DC uh, voltage and because we want to have high accuracy of the of the uh, measurement and the constant value of the of the voltage and current in order to in order to calculate exact uh, value of the or resistance that is the that is the reason okay since there is a, uh, there is no more questions i would like to uh, thank you all uh, for participate participation in today uh, today's webinar and uh, thank you for your uh, time if you have um, more question you can you can write me at uh, uh, branco.p at uh, dvpower.com or uh, you can also write to sales at dvpower.com uh, or you can find more information on uh, uh, our official web page thank you all have a nice day